Hello, James with uh, Love My Pups and My Breeder Supply. I thought I'd do a video today on what determines the sex of offspring. Specifically, we're talking in my case about French Bulldogs, but <coughs> this um, discussion is true, I think, of any mammal. They all do, the, 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 the process is exactly the same. So just kind of a short recap from maybe a previous video. Um, everybody, every creature, mammal anyway, has a, a, a double helix of DNA. This DNA material <clears throat> contains everything about you. When two mammals get together, this thing unzips and one strand comes from one parent and the other strand comes from the other parent and this DNA, new DNA molecule makes up the exact instructions on how to build this new offspring and everyone is unique. All right, so enough of that part. So the genetics that determines all the traits of you, me and a French Bulldog are buried in this DNA. So we have um, Humans have 23 chromosomes made up of uh, strands of DNA, and of which there's one of those chromosomes is the sex chromosome. Um, and it turns out that there are two uh, variations. There's an X and there's a Y. And all females, whether we're talking about human beings, great apes or Frenchies, all females are double X. If you have a double X chromosome, you will be a female. If you are a male, you will have an XY chromosome. You'll have a one of each. And that is then makes you a male. So how is this determined? How do we find out what made a female, what made a male? Well, the answer is, is that all, I'm gonna get rid of this now, all females, only have the X chromosome. That's all they can give, give out. When their DNA splits and it combines together with the male's DNA, they always give out this X chromosome. As opposed to the male, the male can produce, can give out either an X or a Y. And what happens is, is the sperm that the male produces, in the head of it has a DNA information. And that, not a very good picture of sperm, but we get the idea, maybe a better looking sperm right there. The sperm either has the X chromosome in its DNA material in the head of the sperm, or it has the Y chromosome. So what happens is, is when this gets with the egg of the female, the egg of the female always has an X chromosome in it, it because that's all she can give out. But the male typically has an equal number of X and Y sperm swimming around, and if the X gets here first, then that egg ends up being XX, and that ends up being a female. Alternatively, this egg over here, if it's already got an X in there that came from the female, if this sperm gets here before that one does, the Y, then this is an XY, that makes a male. So in a nutshell, well, let me just back this up. I hear a lot of people who will say things like, hey, of your studs, which one produces the most boys? Or I'll have somebody who says, oh, my girl, she almost produces more girls than boys. And when I hear that, I think to myself, we don't quite know the true story here because it doesn't work that way. The first thing is, is the female, and hey, you women livers, I'm sorry, but the female has absolutely nothing to do with the determination of the sex of the offspring. It's all to do with the male sperm. And the male sperm either has the X sex chromosome or the Y sex chromosome. And it just depends on which one of these two gets the egg first as to whether it's an XX female egg or an XY male egg. And there's, there are some things that you can do to shift the chances of getting boys over girls, girls versus boys. But I can tell you this, uh, it's not going to work very well for you. And uh, if you think that you're going to um, um, do much with this, the answer is probably not. But I mean, there are a couple of things. Okay, so the first thing is, we know this. We know that all eggs, <coughs> all eggs have an X chromosome. We can't do anything with the egg. What we can do, there is a difference between 
and I'm going to do it graphically here. A Y sperm that's going to produce a male offspring and an X sperm that's going to produce a female offspring. And the answer is there is a slight difference in size between the two. I, obviously, it looks a lot bigger here, but there is a small difference in size. So there are a number of ways that you can try to get more of the Ys to make female offspring or more of the Xs, excuse me, Ys to make male offspring or Xs to make female offspring. And the answer is, is the first thing is, is that you can do in vitro fertilization. This is what we can do with human beings where we can actually physically find the Xs and the Ys and from that only, produce, only let the Xs get to the egg and produce all females. There, supposedly, there are some differences in terms of the longevity of this sperm, with the female sperm being bigger and consequently being able to survive harsh environments better, and the Y sperm being more uh, agile and a faster swimmer. So you, what you can do is if you want to have more males, you want the Y to get there first, and if you inseminate right at the right time, um, you've got more chance that those guys get to the egg quickly at just the right time and consequently they're the first to fertilize that egg. If you, uh, if you uh, fertilize early, so the sperm has to survive some time before the egg is ready to be fertilized, then you may have a preponderance of females, the stronger sperm, that survives long to get there. And then I've seen some things where, in humans, where you can do some things like take cough suppressant and some other things that can change the, uh, the um, pH of the vaginal tract or you can make the mucus of the vaginal tract change its properties slightly and favor one over the other. But here's the deal. We're talking about small percentages. I mean, you know, typically what you end up with is 50-50. That's the that's a ratio of males to females. So that's going to be your ratio of what you're going to get in your litter. No, no, and people are going to say, no, 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 but I got eight females. Of course, that can always happen. Now, what's the chances of having eight females in a litter? Well, the answer is it's a half times a half eight times. That's how often it will happen. If you want to work out the probability, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you do all that, that's a quarter, that's an eighth, that's a sixteenth, that's a thirty-two, that's a sixty-fourth, that's a one twenty-eight. It's one in two hundred and fifty-six times, on average, you'd have a litter with all eight females in it. Not going to happen very often, but it's not a mat. It's not like it's not going to happen. And that's why we're talking about this probability thing. For those of you that care, what's the chance of having two females in a litter? Well, the chance of the first one being a female is one out of two. The chance of the second one being a female is one out of two. So if you multiply it together, it gives you a chance of one out of four. One out of four litters, you will have a litter of two, of which you just get two females, and one out of four times, you'll get a litter that has two males, and the other half of the time, you get a male and a female. So all of that adds up to one, that's how probability works. So this is two females, this is two males, and this is a male and a female. And that happens twice as often, these ones. So there's the probabilities. So this probability features into all the statistical stuff. Um, so anyway, so where was I? Well, the answer is um, they've done some things like tests on human beings to find out if men who have sired uh, uh, girls lots of times, then they've analyzed their sperm to see whether there's something about the sperm that would make that true of the future. And the answer is they don't. So all this science doesn't show there's any specific thing that makes one man more capable of producing uh, girls than boys. Uh, but it could be that the circumstances that the mating's happening could affect it. So what are the ratios? I, I don't know, but I suspect the ratio is like this, 55 to 45, that's as good as you're gonna get. That's the shift you're gonna get. And if you use a technique that says, hey, we're gonna make the environment hostile so these guys can't survive and get there, the chances are is you're gonna reduce your litter size. So if you had a litter of six puppies, all of a sudden you get three females and one male because those ones died off. Well, I don't think you did yourself any great favor here because what you did is you just culled the males. You didn't make more females. You should have had three and three, <coughs> but you had a small litter. So rather than having a litter of six pups, and I've drawn this very badly, so let's just do this again. So 
So what I'm saying here is if, if per chance you had a litter of six puppies, what would you expect to get? Well, the answer is you'd expect to have three males and three females. Now, if you make the environment difficult for the male sperm to survive, I suspect what will happen is, is that you'll still get three females, but you'll get less males, maybe one male. So now you've got a ratio of three to one on females. Yay, we got it done. Well, you really didn't. What you did is you just did in two of your dogs you would have had. So um, one little thing on genetics, but, but I think the point here is, is, is that the, there's not much you can do to improve on nature to try to get more of one sex than the other. And the reality of this is, is the only thing that makes determines the sex is the sperm of the male. It's got nothing to do with the female. And if you look at ejaculate of any dog, you're going to find that there's just you know, a couple of hundred million sperm in there of which there's going to be approximately 100,000 of them that are the X that make up the female product when they fertilize an egg. And there's going to be 100,000 of the Y that can make, potentially can make a male, a male offspring. And those, that ratio is going to be pretty fixed. It's not going to be much different. So if you've got some ideas to, that you think are going to work, I think probably that's uh, probably not going to work. So anyway, there we go. James Chopping, love my pups. Thank you very much.